series that I have been doing since the 14th of August is my gift to my community. Because I totally believe that without a community, success is often harder than it really can be. And I know for a fact that entrepreneurship is very lonely. It's very hard. And when things get hard, the first inclination is to isolate. And I am here to tell you that that is probably the best, the best thing that you should not even consider. It's the worst strategy. Because it is only when we are in a community that we are able to have someone that we can vent to, someone that we can share ideas with, someone that will become our support system, and someone who will become, in some instances, our accountability partner. If you're not sure, look around you and see who are the people that are encouraging you, are pushing you, are helping you to show up in the world as the best version of yourself. And if that is not happening, then you just answer the same thing that I said. And if that is the case, it is time for you to take radical action. I will leave that right there. So tonight, we are going to talk about entrepreneurship because as females, especially in the Caribbean, a lot of people don't realize that the Caribbean and Latin America is now officially the highest percentage of female entrepreneurs in the world. We are leading the entrepreneurship drive. But one of the things that has been plaguing us is the fact that we are usually so afraid of stepping off the ledge and jumping into entrepreneurship that we can often talk ourselves out of a very good idea. So tonight, we are going to meet Lillian James, who not only jumped off the ledge, but is a serial entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur. Lily has not one, but three businesses. And at the tender age, because I can say tender, you may not be able to say it. At the tender age of 37, with a 13-year-old son, she is doing the damn thing. So if you're wondering how does she do it, how can it be done, and if this entrepreneurship thing is actually for you, don't just listen to me. I'm bringing Lily, and Lily will tell you why, how, and what were her motivations. And maybe out of Lily's story, you will get some motivation and some inspiration to just do the damn thing. So I'm bringing Lily on. Lillian! Hi, good evening, good evening, good evening. Are you hearing me, love? Yes, I am hearing you. Good evening. You, sound, and, uh, you, are, you are somebody who full of mouth. So if I, if I start a conversation and when I bring you up on camera, I'm not hearing a word. I start to check the sound system to see if you're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> to see to see if the electronics work in or because Lily, you are hi, I'm seeing someone, Lily, that you know. You know anybody by the name of Jasmine? Jasmine. Yeah, that's my mom. Ah, and that is also <laughs> mom. Okay, so hi, Aisha. Good night, everyone. Aisha is also here to lend support. So Tonight, we are going to have so much fun, it is not going to be funny. <laughs> this evening, we did a check, a song check, and mm. my VA was here, Lily was here, I was here, and my VA does not know our, my long-standing relationship with Lily. <laughs> I was giving them the story of Lily mm -hmm. carrying me on a bus ride to Rio Claro. And if you know me, I stand up in Hudson and wait for anybody. And Lily and Andrea and them was having the, the finest old time. And every time I call, they are saying to me, we're coming just now. 
Lily and her cohorts made me wait in the hot sun in front of Price Mart Dabadi. <laughs> when, the, when the bus, when the bus finally mm. appeared, listen, listen, I got on that bus and I gave them milk, a piece of milk, whole mine. <laughs> they couldn't be, I bought, I bought from Captain Toko. So Lily and Andrea and all the others will always remember that tongue lashing I give them on that bus ride. So that just goes to tell you how long I have known Lily and how Lily, Andrea, Latoya, Ali, and so many other women that I met in that conference have become my support sisters. So just as I'm saying that you need a tribe in order for you to step out of your way and step into your glory. Lily is prime example of that. So Lily, tell the people a little bit about yourself. Now that I've put you in place, tell the people a little bit about yourself and we will go to the questions after that because Lily is saying that she's nervous, believe it or not. Floor is yours, Lily. Hi, good night, everyone. Uh, my name is Lily Jean. I am 37 years of age. I have a 13 year old son. I work as an administrative assistant. I'm also general manager of Lily's Whistle Cleaning Services, Lily's Signature Sources, and Lily's Construction and Renovations Services Limited. Normally, I am an outgoing person. However, in forums like this, I get a bit nervous. So, I need you also to be with me. I look for it. <laughs> Somebody is Avian is saying go Lily. Mm -hmm. Avian is your aunt. Avon is my auntie. Yeah, well I'm saying another one of my role models. Well, she is there, <laughs> she is on camera and she's encouraging you. So ladies, encourage Lily to be her whole self because we all know <laughs> that Lily pull her mouth. Lily Lily is is Mm. Lily, I, I refer to Lily as a pin size mogul. So Lily, let us start and you will get into the groove because we're going to talk a thing tonight. Okay. So tell me, tell me something about, tell our listeners, because I know your story. Tell our listeners about your entrepreneurial journey. What made you get into entrepreneurship? Due to redundancy from my former job, I decided to take a different path. Which, po which pushed me to do something new. This is how I started my own company. So I will be able to do more flexible, to, to be more flexible and to call my own shot. I, will, I was always passionate about cleaning, so I decided to start my very own business. And well, this is the cleaning. Cleaning is my first business. That's my baby. The second business was my pepper sauce business. My granny used to always make spicy food for us to eat. So we grow into eating spicy food. So that is where the pepper sauce business came in. The construction, I always wanted to do services where I do subcontracting. So I had the construction services as additional services to the cleaning. And then I branched off and put it as a business. I like so, yeah, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. It have it, it has its ups and downs. It's not an easy thing, especially to manage clients, a business, workers. Make sure that everything goes hand in hand. Make sure that everything happens on time and the, in the well the proper way. This is not a walk in the park. It is it is difficult. So you have to be strong-minded. You have to have that moral support in order to get through the different stages and the different steps. I hear you. So that's it in so, a nutshell. So later on, we will talk about your role models and the people who have encouraged you and your own life experiences that have helped you to become the person that you are today. I'm seeing Landon Sylvester. So I'm guessing your, your whole posse. That's here. one of my, yes, I have all my friends, Alita, Wicca, Wicca, Manja, so as well. They are all yeah. of my friends. Yeah. The people here, 
Your people are here. And Candice is saying that entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Let me tell you something about entrepreneurship. And Lily will support this. While you are building a business, you are also rebuilding yourself. You are not going to be the same person that you were before you started a business. And as the business scales and grows and becomes successful, you will also become successful. It is a learning as well as an unlearning experience. So when people look at myself or especially Lily being this young entrepreneur having three businesses, a lot of people will say to themselves, well, you know, she must be just lucky or I can never be that brave. Lily will tell you that we do not get brave. We, we, we're not born brave. Entrepreneurship makes us become brave because we are seeing the benefits for ourselves and those around us. And more importantly, and Lily will agree, we have the opportunity to change people's lives. And that is the really, really the big thing. So. Let me move on to my next question because I'm waiting for Lily to jump out of herself. Lily, your whole crew, your whole family is here. So take a deep breath and relax, please. Do us that favor. <clears throat> so what are some of the challenges? Because you just said that entrepreneurship is not for the faint of heart. Tell me about at least one challenge that you have had and uh, how you've overcome it. What did you learn from it? Time is one of the biggest challenges. Because for me, time is important. Time gone is time you cannot get back. So having to do everything, plus work at 8 to 4, as well as recreate, see about my son, all his study, because I go to school as well, all these things take time. I what, overcame what them by doing. Yeah, I overcame them overcome. by doing a short course in time management, which helped me to manage my time and family and running my business. Let me I break like it down it. a little bit. Go ahead. The, the time management course it 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 taught me how to set deadlines, do set reminders. Writing is another thing that is also important. So you have alarms, you know, it's all these different strategies that they could use to help. But when you set deadlines and you stick with appointments and these things, it will help you to manage your time better. And it's 24 hours in the day we have. And I find I manage my 24 hours really well. So it's 8 to 4, Monday to Friday. And I have to do my business on a weekend and on holidays when I am off. Sometimes on evenings and all I am doing side visits or making pepper sauce. So that's how it goes. So you have to either do a course. Well, I think doing the course is the best pick in order to help you to control that time management. I hear you. So Landon that's, that's saying, my advice to others. Um, Lily Landon is saying working for someone is an eight to four. Entrepreneurship is 24, 7, 365. No one was prepared for that. That's correct. In my That's case, so in my, I think, you see, when I went back to school, Lily, that is what started to prepare me for entrepreneurship. Now, I have, for the first half of my life, I worked shift. And I went to school, started school, working shift as well. So I had to learn how to manage my time because I was working and going to school in the evening or going to school in the evening and coming to work in the night and having to work at night shift and then going home, catching a few hours, and I, I have to go back to class in the evening. And I did that for nine years. So when I went back to school, there was the opportunity cost of what I had to give up because of what I was doing. And I think that was the lesson without I even realizing it. That is where I started to become very focused and very detail-oriented. So I totally support what you do. But I also admire the fact that you realized that this was something that you needed help with, that 
and you lean towards help. Many times we, are, we prefer to struggle with a problem and either procrastinate, overthink it, or be afraid to say, I do not know. I am not very good at this. I am struggling and I need help. So I applaud you for that, Lily. I really do. Because there are women my age, there are men my age and older than me who have not achieved that, less, that level of discipline as yet. So if you are doing it, I hats off to you. So let me go on to the other question because now I'm getting you to warm up a little bit. And your, your peoples in the back there is only, is only good stuff. I will stop and I will start to read some of it just now. So tell me something. You said that you have your 13 year old son, you have three businesses to run, you work eight to four, and you do side visits sometimes in the evening, and often you are working on a weekend. Am I correct? That's correct. And, and you still have time to recreate, because if anybody has looked at um, Lily's TikTok or Lily's um, <laughs> Facebook story, you will see Lily climbing a mountain tossing a, a tire or doing something about, about um, that is involved in fitness. So tell us, all of us, because you are, you are getting it right. How do you manage your work-life balance? My eight to four, I do that on my own. Well, mm -hmm. with help from persons in the office. So for me, delegating is, is very important. Mm -hmm. So every time you, you realize that, hey, I can't do this alone. I need help. Mm -hmm. And trusting people was one, of, was one of my biggest fears. Excuse ahead, one minute. Listening. Excuse one minute. Not a problem. This is one of the things that happens when we have technical issues. Who's that? So somebody's by the door. Lily, take off your... Uh, let me take off the, cam the mic for her. What happens a lot of the time is that we have to manage. We find ourselves... Sometimes we start to feel that we've bitten off more than we can chew. And the first response to that is usually overwhelm. We get overwhelmed. And we start again, we start to overthink and we start to fall into fear. And it is the fear that is us stuck. Not the ability, not the fact that we can do many things. Remember always, and, and I say it every day, I can do all things through Christ. And we keep trying to rely on our own abilities and really and truly the help that we are looking for is closer at hand. And one of the things that Lily has spoken about is trusting people, one, and I want you to take notes tonight, eh? even those of you who are going to look at the replay afterwards. One, trusting people, and two, being comfortable enough in that trust to delegate, knowing that these people will have your back. So Lily, we are back on camera, you're settled. Let me put back on your mic. Because you went to Sorry you about go. that. My apologies. Well, it's your people there. So I'm seeing GK, GT Prince, and he is saying hi. He or she is saying hi, Lily James. And Jasmine. Yeah, that is Kimba. Is, yeah, and Jasmine. Mama Jasmine is saying our help comes from the Lord. And that is so true, Jasmine, because we keep thinking that, in, that we are capable of working out our problems, not realizing that as human beings, we are weak. We have to throw, we, we trust every, we want to trust people that not even worth our trust and we're not putting our trust where, where we will get the best reward for it. So Lily, I'm moving on to the as next As I was question. saying, yeah, how oh, can I finish? I'm sorry. Oh, of course, yes. now she warm up, she put me in my place. <laughs> she warm up. Ma'am, I do apologize. Please continue. Yeah, so, so as I was talking about delegating, the hardest thing for me to do in business is trust people. Mm -hmm. Right? 
And over the years and over time, I realized that you have to put the trust in somebody. Mm -hmm. So I have a strong team. They are very helpful. They, they are very understanding, trustworthy, everything in a nutshell. And they have been with me since I started my business, which are some of them my family members. And sometimes I delegate stuff and they do it so well that I doesn't have to worry. So Lily, all these skills and asking, knowledge. One second, Lily. Somebody is asking, before you continue, somebody is asking, do you mind sharing where you did your time management course? You can check out, check out CCLS, CCLS, which is Cipriani, CTS College as well. Thank you. So we'll put, the, we'll put the link in later just in case somebody's interested. But please continue. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Please continue, mm -hmm. ma'am. Do you have do you are you ready for the next question? Because mm -hmm. I know my place. I know my place. <laughs> I know my place. I know That's my place. Okay. But I know how important delegating is. You know, it's, sometimes we just try to be so independent because that is what we know. You have a business and you think, hey, I can do, I can do everything for myself. And it, sometimes it just be so much and it be so stressful. Let me tell you so something. I'm glad I that I realized that sooner rather than later. And I, and I would support you there because one of the things I did a course about, about two weeks ago, with a Trinidadian who's a videographer, online coach, online trainer. Zaley Barkley is fantastic, and I cannot say enough about her. She has been so helpful and useful to me in my brand and coming up on camera. And to know that I get that, I got that kind of support from a Trini person just like myself just made it even sweeter. And one of the things that Zaley said is that we have to get help. We have to delegate. Because if we don't delegate, then exhaustion and burnout will make you grow to hate the very same company that has been your dream. And since I went virtual, I have realized that I do not want to do everything. Although, as you well know, Lily, I am good at many things. But I do not want to. So I made a decision to focus on my core competencies and uh, give the VA the rest of it. And that has been really, really useful to me. And I think that I would recommend that many small business owners, if you think that you can't afford help, think about the consequences or the cost of not getting help. That is what I want people to consider. So let me ask the fourth question. And I am hoping that you're feeling a little more confident now because you interrupt me. You book me a little bit, i taking it because I know you a long time, because most people can't buff me, but are taking the buff. So here is the next question. And this is a question I know you're going to like. Who are your role models and why? My role models are my auntie, Yvonne Valentine, who's presently on the, on the live. My mom, Jasmine Valentine, you, Rhonda Glenn, and Avalon Gomez. So let me start with my mom. Ever since growing up, from very young, I never saw my mom out of work. She was so hard. She worked so hard. She has always been independent. I never saw her sit down and depend or wait on anybody. So she's our strong pillar. Up to now, she still works really hard. My aunt works very hard as well. She manages her own business and she also works as a nurse. Not in Trinidad. Rhonda, Rhonda Glenn, she has been working, studying, and running her business full time. I can't say part-time. People that say working and, and running a business is part-time. It can never be part-time. It's full-time because you have to work your eight hours at a job or your 12 hours at a job and you still have to put in your time in the business and into studying. So it's full-time. My aunt does it. Rhonda does it. Avalon Gomez. 
does it as well. And these are not people who I know for the last year or two years. I've known Rhonda a lot of years. I've known Avalon a, a lot of years. My aunt and my mom, well, we are very close. And the first time when I came up with my business idea, my aunt was the first person that I reached out to. And she ran with it like a kind of an express. She ran, she ran with it. She, 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 she gave me all the tips that I needed, every single thing. Up to now, she still supports me. My mom has always supported me through everything. Rhonda, I can call Rhonda at any time. Ask Rhonda anything, Rhonda answers. She responds. She comes up with strategies. Sometimes we only phone for hours. Avalon Gomez, sometimes, you know, you lost contact with people, your, your friendship sometimes go down and up. Avalon, Anytime I call Avalon, even if Avalon is busy, she will make that time and call me back. So these are four strong, well women who give great feedback and ideas. A line of women who love to grind for what they need. That's why it's very important when you have an idea to have strong minded people around you. It's very, very important. Know I who you're calling, you. know who you're talking to, and know who you're confiding in. Because not all advice is good advice. And not everybody who, who talk to you or who who tell you something or who think that, the, you know, they, they're listening to the person and you're thinking, yes, that person know what they're doing before you know. <laughs> Strong-minded individuals as well as like-minded individuals who will give you positive feedback. Always remember that. And I agree with you and I totally support you. And it goes back to what I have always said to you, Lillian, that when I was coming up in the world, I, just this evening, I was telling my VA the same thing. When I was coming up in the world, I wish to all God that there was somebody like me to tell me certain things, that it is going to be all right, that your idea is not too far-fetched that you can do what you want to do. You just have to come up with a plan and work the plan. A plan is not a perfect guarantee, but it is a good starting point because a plan allows you to measure twice and cut once. And when you are able to do that, then you are able to reach for the things that you actually want. But I like what you talked about the support system. Because just as when we started tonight, we talked about how important it is for aspiring entrepreneurs, whether it is that you have a business already or you are thinking about building, growing, and scaling that business, that it is so important that you be surrounded by people who are heading in the same direction. Now, you are a young entrepreneur. And this is a question that I want to ask you so that you could probably expound on it a little bit with younger entrepreneurs who will be looking at this live tonight and maybe looking at it on the replay. Why do you think a lot of female entrepreneurs isolate themselves? I think they isolate themselves because they look at other women and think and feel not belittled, but they don't think that they can reach to that level. Mm -hmm. So they look at them as a as a threat instead of looking at them as as not encouragement. Inspiration. As inspiration. As let me use this person as a person who I want to be like them. Or well, I want to be better than them. Mm -hmm. So so they look at what's around them instead of using it as a a stepping stone, they pull away or they go in a corner. And a lot of not just females, a lot of people cannot take um constructive criticism as well. That is so true. That is so if you're going true. wrong and someone tell you about it or something they see that is it, not making sense or something is wrong and they, they, they call you or they tell you about it in private because not everybody will correct you in public. 
-hmm. you will feel a type of way because you will think mm -hmm. that, hey, who's that person to tell me what to do? Worse that if it's, if it's a female entrepreneur or a male entrepreneur or someone who has who holds a higher esteem, they will look mm -hmm. at that person as, oh, so that person feel they reach somewhere, they can tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you end up, not for me, it have people that just go into a shell and some of them never come out. They stay there for years and years and years. I, I'll share something with you, Lily. You know, I I use you know, you know, we know we go back. So you know, if I see something that I could speak into somebody's life and say, you know, what about if you do this instead of do that? Or what about if I have given away training, one-on-one -on -one coaching, whatever to people, because not everybody could afford bootstrapping is tough and some people don't have financial support or family support when they're starting a business so many years they spend in in pain because they're lonely and you know in Trinidad how we how we are you start a business and immediately people want to know uh, that pain how much money it is get all of a sudden everybody wants to know what your bank account looking like but nobody is going to help you to buy as much as a bottle in your case as much as a glass bottle to put some pepper salt in. And we know that because we are really the first generation of women, especially women of color, who are actually going to be doing this. We are building a framework where long after I have gone to my great reward, there will be young women who will be standing on our shoulders. And that is why it's so important for me to give back. But I am saying this to say this. On more than one occasion, I have reached out to people and given them advice out of the goodness of my heart. And some people feel very intimidated by it. Or in some instances, some people stop talking to me altogether. So now I have been very I have become very careful about who I can actually talk. London is saying, what is my discount? Um, I'm saying that um now I've become very, 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 very careful about who I give advice to. Because just this week, um, a woman who I did a coffee chat with, she put up something on LinkedIn. And I said, you know, some of these things that she's trying to explain in writing, it would be so much better if she just came up on camera and made it as simple as possible. Eh. The woman put me in my place proper, proper, proper. I say, I see the, I say, I see the same thing again. Mm -hmm. So now it is. It might sound very, it might sound heartless to some extent, but my intent is not to be heartless. The, the thing is, not everybody is receptive, and you are so dead on when you say some people can't take constructive criticism. And I have now trained myself to see people do things and just say, say nothing. Because I am saying, I have seen people do nonsense and I have seen in their comments that people will congratulate them and say, um, um, well done and this is so nice. And I, you and the dog outside know that it is not good and it is not their best. And you ask yourself, Lillian, these people are no friends. <laughs> but then it might be that they're not taking constructive criticism. So they're taking flattery, they're taking mama guy. So you have to understand, in my case as a business strategist, some people feel that when I give advice, it's because I'm looking for clients. Not everybody is going to be my client, and I am good with that. I am comfortable with that, because not everybody is ready for, for massive change. And I do have a problem with that. So I come up the hard way. I have been on my own since I turned 21. I've been living outside here out in these streets as a single woman. Since then, I just turned 60 on Monday. And I could have ended up in a different life if I didn't make certain choices. So this is what I does, this is why, this is my motivation when I reach out to a queen, a young queen, or even an older queen and say, hey, this is not, you could do better than this. Because I know, I know life is composed of choices. So I, I applaud you. And hopefully tonight, people will be able to say, you know what? There are things that I don't know how to do and lean towards knowledge. So I'm going to ask you another question. So easy the questions get in now. You ain't even matter to worry yourself. I'm fanning. 
first the questions and then that I write down, it ain't good for nothing else more than to fan myself. So tell me, share with us a memorable success story. I would want to say the pepper sauce, but that's just me. What's one of your best? I know there are many stories, but just share one memorable success story. Something that made you feel that you know what? I'm going in the right direction. The cleaning and the pepper sauce. Because the cleaning, you know, when I started off, I had so much challenges. Because, you know, you're starting a business and you don't have knowledge, you don't know nothing, you don't know what to do. So, you had one job we went, my, well, my team and I went on, and we didn't have all the tools, the right chemicals. Mm -hmm. So, this job took us from 7 o'clock in the morning till about 9 o'clock tonight. Lord. When one of my workers was finished, his gloves, we didn't have proper gloves face mask, all these different things, which is important, especially when you're dealing with chemicals. So not having the right knowledge, it's all right, tools, chemicals, it, it causes the job to take longer. One of my workers' hands would damage, like it swollen from the chemicals. Mm -hmm. So you know, of course, after that, I will go and do my research, ask questions, find out information, and after that, everything went okay time after time. The pepper sauce now, it was supposed to be juice. <laughs> really? It was supposed to be, I was going to make fresh juices because you know, I love fitness and I would like to do everything health-wise. Health -wise. So it, so I started to make carrot juice for that, that didn't come out good. So, <laughs> so I said, instead of making juice, the carrot pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. So I made the carrot pepper sauce and put it in the little small containers and give it out to everybody. My mom, my, mom, my sisters, the neighbors, the business people are wrong. Everybody eating pepper sauce for free. And they loved it. Mm -hmm. So I started searching for courses. For me, everything mm -hmm. is courses and getting the knowledge. So I started searching for courses all over Trinidad, pepper sauce making classes. And the Ministry of Agriculture was offering it. So the first time I, I tried, it failed. I didn't get through. The class was full. The second mm -hmm. time again, I failed. I do all this time I do another courses. I just to try to get into that pepper sauce making class. While I doing that, I try another other flavors. So for me, it's, it's about making flavored pepper sauce. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be like everybody else making regular pepper sauce. So I tried with the carrot, it was a score. I, I even tried sorrel, pumpkin, purple, ginger, lime. And so I keep trying and giving samples and people started to love it. I went and got the bottles and it's so everything that started going on. Then finally, I got you to do the program. However, I got you on standby. So I wasn't in the class yet. I had to go up Mausica. And wait on the outside to see oh get in. So it was 30 people in the class and I was the 31 person. But I got you to do the, to do the class and yeah. Still making pepper sauce. Now I have pineapple, sorrel, lime chunky, hot and spicy, mango. Still have the carrot original and I have many more to come. But it's fun for me. The cleaning is the, for the clean with the cleaning is the transformation for me. You know, mm -hmm. turning a client place from messy to clean. Mm -hmm. That smile, that that feeling. Some clients will say, you know, you, you have my feeling to lie down on the ground, you know, it's clean as a whistle. So the mm -hmm. both businesses have different aspects and I enjoy both. My workers and all they enjoy doing it. So Two different business, clean and pepper sauce, not a combination. I but... never, I never <laughs> would have guessed that is juice you you were going to make. If yeah, this is the juice. first, this is the first time that I have heard <laughs> this story of this gracious pepper sauce that now everybody wants Lily's sauces. Your your me 
you and everybody's friend is here tonight and Hanifa is in the background giving you her blessings. Hi, Hanifa. Hi, How are you going? Hi, Mava. <laughs> Hi, Mava. Mava is our people. Again, as I said, and I keep and I will continue to say, you need a tribe of women who are pulling for you. And as Lillian said, we are all busy. L listen, I fully expect that Hanifa is going to win the Express Individual of the Year. I am putting mouth on, on Hanifa tonight because Hanifa works tirelessly, tirelessly for um, youths and young women and men in very at-risk communities. And she has expanded that to include our sisters from the Venezuelan mainland, where she is helping them to move from um, disadvantages that have come about through no fault of their own so that they can earn an honest dollar. And Hanifa is our people. So good night, Hanifa, and, uh, and keep doing the work. So nice Lillian, you here, Hanifa. So long I have well, you know, seen you. Well, you know, you know Hanifa busy, but she never She's took a busy, busy woman. Us. Never too busy to give us that support. And I do <laughs> appreciate this support. So tell us something. You said that you once supervised a crew of men in a construction company. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. All right. So now I'm going to ask you another question. Because entrepreneurship prior to now, prior to now, has been so male-dominated, how have you been able to make your mark? I hire both male and female. Mm -hmm. I don't just hire females alone or segregate and say, mm, no, I don't want no males working for me. I hire both sex. We work hand in hand in order to be diverse as well as I don't discriminate against people because of their cultural background. So, you know, some jobs when you go to work, you know, they will tell you you have to get a COC, a clean COC. If somebody mm -hmm. don't have a clean COC, I think everybody deserves a chance in life mm -hmm. because we all got chances. I'm not going to say I'm not hiring you because you, you was a criminal or, or you have a bad COC. Everybody is not me. Everybody won't think like me. But I think everybody deserves a chance. Because I'm a female and I get a lot of chances in business, on my job, and you know how hard it is as a female. When it comes to males, mm -hmm. especially as a business owner, mm -hmm. they try to boycott your prices or they find there's too much money you're charging for that. Why you can't do that for me for free or for less? Females does it as well, but I think it happens more with males than females. You know, the, the approach is totally different. And then I am so tiny. I'm a pint size. Look how, how tiny I am. So you know the feeling. You know, she's small here. I can take advantage of her. But my big mouth and my That's... personality <laughs> speaks, speaks for me. So... And that's what I do. I don't discriminate and I don't I don't look at another person and say, well, you know, judge people. You give people a chance. Because you can change. And sometimes all mindset. somebody needs is that sometimes that's all somebody needs, you know, Lily. All somebody a needs chance. is somebody to believe, to believe in them. In them. To believe in exactly. them. Exactly. One of the things I see that you also do, Lily, as we on this point. You said that you hire single mothers, you hire students to give them, make sure that they have a little money in their hands, and you give people the opportunity to work for you without, um, so that they will get the experience. Because one, one of the things that happens all of the time, and Hanifa is now saying it's someone to believe in them. What something happens in Trinidad often, and it happens elsewhere as well, 
People want to offer employment, but they want you to have experience, but you can't have experience at anything if you have never exactly. worked. So, so tell us a, a little bit about your outreach where you bring, you know, these people to your companies and give them jobs. A, a lot of people work for me and they have their jobs or they're doing something on the side. Because mm -hmm. I once was that type of person where I go to school and they want a little extra money to go in Pennywise. Before it wasn't Pennywise, but to just do things for yourself. Buy a little perfume and little slippers and clothes. And you don't want to always depend on mommy and daddy. Well, that I think that comes, that, that is not like people who have money. Mm -hmm. Persons who come out of poverty are the persons who look for opportunities. I don't want to, to song any type of way, but that's mm -hmm. just how I see it. Most of the people who look for opportunities are the persons who come out of poverty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you will go and look for a side job while you go to school just to make that extra money. And I know mm -hmm. the I know the opportunities I had when I was going to school. I was working when school was on vacation just to make an extra dollar. Mm -hmm. We get we got um exploited sometimes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's the next thing i try not to do i try to if this job sometimes i go and do a job and sometimes the hours go over and i will give my workers extra i'm not going to say well well there's the amount of pain you see the day so that's all they're getting no that's not the way you treat people how you want to be treated or how you expect to be treated especially young people younger than you People like to take advantage of younger people because they are vulnerable. You know, they take advantage of them because they're asking for help. They're not begging, you know, they're asking for help. Somebody asking for a job is not begging. A person asking for an opportunity. And I totally agree. People tend to take advantage of young people. Even adults get advantage, but when a young person reaches out to you for help or a young person comes to you for advice, just imagine that a young person coming to you for advice and you're taking advantage of that young person's trauma or whatever that person is going to be for your help or for your help. You can offer somebody help by telling them, well, you know, I, I don't have a job for you, but you know what, you can come and fold clothes. Find something for the person to do instead of you either turning away the person or you 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 abusing the person in some form or fashion. Because when you abuse people, so you're me, just adding to the pain. Exactly. So for me, helping is very critical. It's important. Don't take advantage. Giving somebody a job, giving somebody something to do, even if it's not for the whole month. Sometimes Christmas, I just have a busy busier period than before. You just hire them to do that. Work for Christmas. Help. That is all people let me a little help. Sometimes, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We are on the same page. And this is why I like you so much. Because you are always thinking about the next thing. And based on my experience with you, it is never about just me, just Lily and James alone. It is how can I help other people to have a good experience and still build a business that I could be proud of. Because I'll tell you something, Lily. As Gen X, which is me, as Gen X goes down the side of the mountain and Gen Z takes our place in the marketplace, these young people do not care how much qualifications you have. They do not care how much money you have in the bank. They do not care who is your father and your mother. They care about what you value. They care about how are you showing up in the world. They care about how much of a difference you are making in the lives of people around you. And if you could only offer them a shirt, a pants, or a service, they wouldn't buy from you. They will not buy from you. And that is something that we have to understand that if you are not leading with value, then you are going to lose your, your clients to your competitors. If you notice, just for a second, 
if you look at all the corporate citizens, now I am I do not know whether they are telling the truth or not. Eh? I don't know. I can't judge anybody. But if you notice the marketing strategy of some of the bigger brands just in Trinidad and Tobago, we're just using Trinidad and Tobago as our example because we live here. If you notice, there's a shift. First Citizen Bank is doing girls first. Um, some other, the banks are doing um, programs for women, for young girls. The corporate citizens are doing rebuilding and skill development. All of those things are because they know that it is not enough to just sell a good or sell a service. It is you have to show up in the lives of the people that you want to serve. And if you are showing up in their lives, then they will partner with you. And that never used to happen before. That used to, you go, you, you go, you pull out your money. As they used to tell you in the market, you can't boil your money and drink it. Um, they, they just used to give you a product or a service, and that has changed. And it is changing because of that. And the funny thing about it is that small business owners still do not understand that in order for you to get, you have to give. School is closed for the, what are you calling it now? The Java, worst, worst, word, worst word invented. <laughs> worst word invented but then i am old so i could say that every young person would have loved to get a little something to do even if it's to buy help their mother and father buy a copy book even if it's to buy a fancy sneakers even if it's to go and get their hair braided it is the little things that matter lily it is the little things that people remember about you and it is the little things that will make your clients become lifelong clients. It is not about the goods and services because we are still selling to people. We are still serving people. We are still, we are still creating transformations. When you clean somebody's house and the before and after, and the people are saying to you that the place is so clean and nice, they're feeling to sleep on the ground. That is a mm -hmm. transformation. You can't, you can't value that in dollars and cents because the feeling that these people get in their chest when they see the difference, that is what they will remember. That is because they will want their friends, their relatives, and even their enemies to have the same experience. And that is what we are selling. That is what entrepreneurship is about. It is about giving back. What? Yes, it is about making a dollar. Yes, it is about building a brand. But it is about service. And I think you have you have you have that lockdown and you have brought out some very valid points tonight. So now I am going to talk, see everybody who jumping out to themselves. Jasmine is saying, be a good role model. Alicia Swidaki is saying facts. Hanifa is giving heart emojis. Alita Wickham is here. Um, Hanifa is also saying someone to believe in them. Uh, let me see who else. Landon is saying, I'm not doing that. I rather hush. Well, you mean I shouldn't tell nobody nothing. Hanifa is saying um, inspirational story. Again, Landon is saying great role models. Jasmine said, our help comes from the Lord. These are the stories of entrepreneurship. We are the first generation of women who are actually doing this. We are the first. So I now that we are... Um, Anifa, um, Anifa's comment. You know, you see a lot of people sharing stories. Mm -hmm. And for me, sharing a real story, like something that happened, like an experience that happened with you, is what people will buy into. Yep. Not yep. a fake story. I'm not saying, because, you know, you have to be careful with the things that comes out of your mouth. I'm not saying people share fake stories. I'm just saying that people rather hear an experience that you had. People like to hear real stories, not something that some happen to somebody else. People like to hear from you. Inspire them. Tell them, you know, this is what happened from point A to point B. And this is how I reached to point C. 
instead of you just not sharing anything and you're just sharing quotes or you're just sharing content and you're not telling people stories of, of the experiences or the days that you just have or the things that you know mm -hmm. not every day you'll wake up and you will have a, 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 a best of days everybody does have sad days happy days all angry days but some people portray an image where they, they only have good moments. And I think that's one of the issues with social media. Let Somebody me tell you sharing only good stories, good things. And today I told you, you will tell me a I, human being who has different that. issues. You, you, we all have anger, sadness, happiness, down times, up times. And exactly. I think this is one of the things that lack in storytelling on social media especially and you know a lot of youths they look at social media and sometimes they look at social media and they're looking at somebody and going i want to be like that person you just hear it every time i look around you just say it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i want to be just like that person because what you see the person sh only showing happiness and 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 great times you no know? everybody mm -hmm. have moments we all have moments we didn't just grow up and become big and become and, and just get money and that's it like we have in a good life no we all have different challenges different steps different mm -hmm. things that we face mm -hmm. so and i you think are so, you that are so is correct. lacking in society mm -hmm. today with females males so the young people are coming up and looking up to certain people they, they you know they admire and they want to be like them so they're doing the most to be mm -hmm. like this person you know i want and to then, i want to have all that money i want to you don't know what people are doing there is, there is something never tell you what they're doing. There is something in sociology that they call it, they call it strain. And it is just like the word, you're straining. You are forcing to live a life because you feel that if you do not have that kind of life, then, then your life has no value. So um, Hanifa said relatable stories. Alicia said it's just like sharing your testimony. Alita also okay. says that um, being real is what stands out. Okay. Listen, you know, I, I don't hide anything. When I, I, I'll share something with you tonight. And I, and I was talking to somebody last night. I lost over $150,000 last year. $150,000. And I who like nice things, who like my nails and my hair and my clothes and everything on point because my mother only had one girl child and only me to dress. I have five brothers. And losing that money through no fault of my own being taken advantage of by family members was so heartbreaking because it's only the people that are closest to you could do you something like that. A thief can't come and lock your neck and take $150,000. And the amazing part about it is that I, for a while, I was so heartbroken and I was ashamed because I felt as a business strategist, this should not have happened to me. But you know what I did? Two things. One, a neighbor of mine, because I, I keep telling people that they would have seen me on TV you know, and they wouldn't have seen me groomed and looking nice or looking tonight, you know. They have seen it in handcuff and two police dragging me away because I was at that stage. I was at that stage where I felt so betrayed that I felt that, you know what? I want people to, I want them to feel the pain that they put me through. And I remember my neighbor saying to me, he said, Rhonda, I know it is hard. It is heartbreaking. All of us on the street know what you went through. He said, you know what? Sometimes you just have to walk away from something. But you know where I got strength, Lillian? When I started to, to talk, tell my story. Because here's what also happens on social media. And you know that. We now talk about it. People believe that they will see you on social media. And they feel that you ain't, you feel in no pain enough. People saw me on social media and make the assumption that I live in my best life. And not knowing that I was this, this, this. I can hardly see between my two fingers. I was this far away from getting locked up. And my the people who betrayed me have no remorse for what they, they did to me. None whatsoever. And there were people on social media who thought 
that I was, and I'm being blunt, they felt that I had money and I was simply in denial. I was hiding from people. Not knowing what happened to me, you know what I did? I started to talk my story. I started to tell people exactly what happened to me. And what happened is that I started to realize that there were other people who was going through the same thing as me or even worse. And by standing up, by being vulnerable and by being honest and being truthful, I allowed other people to be honest and truthful and vulnerable. I remember... I remember sharing something on social media and that post on LinkedIn became one of my biggest posts. I had over 300 and 400 likes on that post and comments. And the morning that I got up, my intention was not to write that at all. So I understand what you're saying. So now, let us see what other people are saying. I hope that you're hearing me because I feel my, my Bluetooth want to kill me tonight. So if you're not hearing me, tell me and I'll switch over to my headphones. Okay, I'm hearing you. So, okay, great. So everyone has a story. Young people need proper role models. Society doesn't have much of these, and that is true. Landon is saying, losing money in business to me happens to everyone, but the lessons learned from it are 100% valid. I totally, totally agree with Landon. Because if somebody had told me that that would have happened to me, me of all people, I would have said no, and until it did. But those who earn the dollar unjustly don't ever see their way. London is absolutely correct. So sometimes when we are vulnerable, when we are speaking our truth and we're speaking truth to power, we give people permission to do the same. And between that time to this time, I have seen a total growth in my business. I took the business from physical and I made it virtual. I've been approached to write a book. I have an upcoming podcast. I have a YouTube channel. I'm hoping when I launch my podcast that you will come as a guest. And I have, more importantly, I have realized that it is not what happens to you, it's how you react to it. That's and that was my accurate and what you do and what when you learn happen. when you how you learn i took everything and i just threw away every bad thing and i took the lessons and i kept going forward i rebuilt my business and i rebuilt my life so this is my message so now that we are five past nine and we thank everybody tonight the comments were fantastic the encouragement for my friend lillian james who will be my friend forever and ever. Amen. I thank yes. her for coming. And Lily is somebody that I really, really like. I really, 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 really like Lily and James. I, listen, Lily makes me feel like when I was Lily age, I was not that person. And I wished I was that person. I became that person because as I tell people, I knew who I wanted to be when I was eight years old and it took me 50 years to get there. So, Lily got there before me. Hanifa is saying what is lacking in this society today is structure where we as women continue to help each other up the ladder. And Hanifa is exactly. right. We have a responsibility to push, pull, drag, cajole each other. Because when we don't stand up for each other, if we, when we don't show up for each other, that's exactly what the system wants. They want us to always be at war with each other, that we always war in, that there's always jealousy and comparison and overthinking, that we always feel that there is not enough. And I tell people, the fight is not against each other. The fight is against poverty. And I'll continue to say that always. So Lily, now that you are fully comfortable, I've seen it on your face, and I've taken a drink for just for that, just for that. I've on set, focus, focus, focus. I've taken a drink just for that. Mm -hmm. as, we, <laughs> as we close off, and I thank you, and I love you, and I will always support you. I will always I love you too, you. and I thank you, you so much for always, always taking my call, no matter always, what time. Always, always. When you call me and tell me, Gil, I have an idea. And I talk into people, and like nobody really hear what like they, they are not making no sense. Like they, like you, you're talking Lily to them and they're telling you nonsense. 
Lily, so those, Lily you know, I'm not saying everybody's supposed to be like us or no. It's just that when you have an idea, you need to talk to somebody who can who can relate. And who will not judge who, you. When it bounce the idea or they kept something or they give you back, you know, they put something to the idea, you know. And that is what we need. Everybody will not be what... entrepreneurs. We are not saying that, you know. Exactly. Some people will work. Some people will be. A, some people will be an entrepreneur. Some people might have a be a um have a skill. Everybody have their own purpose. So sometimes exactly. I know what you can't hear or listen or understand what I am saying. I will say, Randa, you busy? Can you take a call? And as Randa say, yes, call. I call in. Same thing with my mom, my aunt. You know, everybody have their own ability. So Rhonda might say something. My aunt might say something. My mom might say something. And then you put all together and you put it in a bowl or you put it in a book or you put it somewhere. And it's not you, it's not three of them alone or four of them alone are my role models. I have role models who are males as well. Because mm -hmm. males see things different to women. So sometimes Rhonda might say something and a male might say something else. So it's good to seek advice. Not to run by everybody who gave any advice. You have to know who to go to to ask questions, to pitch your idea to, to talk to. Because I never had an issue where I pitch my idea to anybody. And you know, if people let's steal their ideas, I never had that issue. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Even if they steal it, it wouldn't be the same. Because your idea is your idea. But it's good to talk to light minded people. And not everybody you talk to will have a business or have education or, 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 have, a, or have money. Sometimes the smallest man, the most simplest person can, can give you some sort of advice. Tell you something exactly. to help with your, with, your, with your everyday life, with your business, with anything you're doing. Exactly. So I am glad that I have good people around me. Thank God for that. And that is what is important because we are learning from each other as we grow. I will learn from Lily, Lily will learn from me, we will learn from the people who walk in and out of our lives, and at the end of the day, it will help us to become better. So, in closing, Lily, if somebody wants to reach out to you for either pepper sauce, they want to reach out, well, I, I, you owe me a bottle of pepper sauce for my 60th birthday, oh God, oh God, oh God, last night, which one flavor, of them which morning, flavor you want, the number one well, flavor? flavor. Right. Whatever flavor you think will suit me. One o'clock this morning, I'm doing boiled corn with um, pigtail and coconut water, coconut milk and pumpkin and thing in it. And a little bit of lily pepper sauce in the mix would have been the damn thing. So. Yeah, it was missing no. the pineapple. You see what I'm telling you? Because it's pork. <laughs> so pineapple is the thing for pork. Exactly. And when, when, you, when you're working virtual here, what is happening? I will cook any hour, you know. If I sit in down in my office, because we're in my office right now, and if I decide, you know what, I'm going to bubble up pot. Because remember, I am from country, I'm from Sunny Grande originally. If one o'clock in the morning I decide to bubble up pot, stove starting and I put bubbling in, and I will eat a little bit and then I will go upstairs and sleep. But I am saying that if somebody needs to get a scrub out, you know, it, you know, it have some people do it have parts of the house that don't like to clean, mm -hmm. like the fridge and the of cupboard. Mm -hmm. If they want a little pepper sauce to spice up their life, if they need somebody to do extension, like me, who's going and do a major extension on the tongue house, God willing, next year, please the Lord. How can someone get in contact with you? London talking about I the am first on, time you pepper sauce. I am on Facebook. Instagram, LinkedIn, WhatsApp, TikTok, Twitter, and all. I'm also on Google. My business contact number is 389-3462. My the, the three businesses' names are Lily's One Pepper Sauce, Lily's Signature Sources. Lily's spell L I L. Double E apostrophe S. All the lilies are spelled that way. So lilies is short for Lillian. So it's Lily Signature Sources, Lily's Whistle Cleaning Services, 
clean as a whistle. Lily's Construction and Renovation Services Limited. The Thank business you, that you will see a lot is the cleaning business and then the pepper sauce. You will That's see true. it all over. It's on TikTok. It's all over. It's all over. You can't miss it. It is, it is so true. So Lillian, thank you. You said You're most you welcome. I had to shake <laughs> some of the answers out to you, but I am not, not coming back to your backside <laughs> for more because you will be on my podcast as soon as it launches. Ladies and gentlemen, Just call me or message thank, me. I'm right here, always thank, waiting. I'm ladies and gentlemen, thank you, thank you, Jasmine, thank you, La London, Ch thank you, e MJR, E Major, thank you, everyone, for coming out to support Lily because Lily is she's worth it. She is worth it. So, for those of you who are interested in what I do, which is in business planning, branding, startup, one-on-one -on -one coaching. And all the others, you can check out my website, which is www.rondaglynn.com. And I am also on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I am on Instagram. I pass through on threads. And you can, as I said, you can check out my website. Have a great evening, everyone. I just and want to share one thing that. before you go, Rhonda. I just want to give a little advice tip. To young women and men is to work hard, remain positive, and no matter what obstacles you may encounter along the way, stay focused. Positive, this is one of my things. Positive mental attitude. No matter what nobody tell you all, you can do it. Just be positive all the exactly. time. Exactly. So that's all I so want to much. leave them with. And thank you, thank everybody, you. for coming. I appreciate all of you. I love you. We we'll send some kisses. Yeah. Thanks you for see, coming. She, pro she <laughs> properly, properly get over the nervousness. So, Lily, just hold on while we come off the air, and we will chat a little bit more. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. The live can be found on my Rhonda Glynn page, on the event page, and also on my YouTube channel and when the season is finished, which is on, on Tuesday the 29th, we are doing the last one. And I would really love everyone to drop in because it is Latoya West Blackwood. And Latoya is one of the hardest people to get mm -hmm. to sit for an interview because Latoya is doing the most in Jamaica. And she's also a member of our, our Good Girl group. And yes, she we, is. Don't, say, the we people. don't say no to you. We don't say no to each other. So Latoya is a global storyteller and she's doing something that we are not doing in Trinidad, which is using our own stories within our own narrative. And she's helping create books that are used at primary school, secondary school, and even at tertiary level so that our stories and our narratives remain part of our shared history. Latoya is, was recently awarded a big award from Yale for the work that she is doing. She was the first female head of the Jamaica Publishers Association, and she also runs a publishing company called iPublishing. So look out for Latoya. She's going to be our last guest on Tuesday the 29th at 8 p.m. This has been a pleasure. I am Rhonda Glenn, and have a great evening. Bye, ladies. Bye, everyone. Hmm.